I'm Marlon James, and I'm here thinking how apt and also a little sad that you know quarantine is the word of the year. It's of course pretty apt. It has this. It pretty much described for most of us what our lifestyle was for this, you know, this year. This quarantine and um, quarantine for me began in March when I and my partner fled to Connecticut to be out of the center of this this horrible disease, this plague that we're going through. The thing about quarantine is that it's one of those words that's supposed to be rare. We're not supposed to use it that much. And uh, we've had to. It's one of those words that have become, in America at least, immediately politicized. And there are people who are still dying because they refuse to, to, to you know, absorb this word and to realize what it means and realizing that it's a life-saving measure because to be honest it hasn't always been quarantine can't escape its negative connotations its racist connotations its ethnocentric connotations the idea of to protect me i will exclude you there's no escaping that but there's also no escaping that this word has also been a life-saving measure this year um you know a life-saving thing to do and to 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 embark on and as we move further in you know dealing with this disease as we now deal with the reality of possibly effective vaccines um you know counterbalance with a exploded resurgence quarantine becomes more urgent than ever it's one of those words we will never love because it really means a good thing. It almost never means something good. We'll really know love, but we absolutely need. And that's why the word is so urgent. And I think that's why it's the word of the year. So may its reign be short and may we have the wisdom and the foresight to never have to use this word again. Thank you.